Hello everyone and welcome! There is a lot of abilities in the game that are unexplained. How does Garen summon a giant sword or how is it possible that Lee Sin flies, I don't know. But what I do know is that there is a good explanation behind some of the seemingly normal skills. So today I want to talk about 10 champions whose abilities may have much more to them than you might think. So let's get right on it. The first champion I picked is the one we recently talked about. I am glad that most people realize that the spears that are stuck in Kalista are from Hecarim's knights. But what some of you may have missed is what Hecarim's ultimate actually does. Most people think that the other horsemen are just copies of Hecarim himself. But when Hecarim uses Onslaught of Shadows, he actually summons the rest of the Knights of the Iron Order to ride with him. This hints at the fact that when the rest of the Knights fell on the Shadow Isles, they weren't resurrected as ghouls, but as horsemen similar to Hecarim. The next champion I wanted to talk about is Wukong, specifically his passive. Don't mind the long staff or the fact that he can actually clone himself, because today we will talk about Stone Skin. In game, all his passive does is that it gives him armor and magic resistance for each visible nearby enemy champion. The only time you can physically see the effect of his passive is when Wukong dies. You can see him turning into stone. The reason for this is because Wukong was created from a runestone. Yes, the same runestone as one of those that wiped entire nations. In short, one of the runestones from the Rune Wars got lost in a jungle. It sat there for a while until a clan of apes found it. Their chieftain tried to use its power to make them all immortal, but instead he destroyed it and created Wukong. So yes, technically he is a living runestone. Next we have Yorick. Summoning ghouls that either walk around or form into walls was clearly explained in his lore. What you could have missed is the reason he can summon the Maiden of the Mist. He can control the bodies of the dead, but not the mist in its full power, so why is it? When you look at Yorick, you may notice that his cape is made of the black mist. This is the portion of the mist that stuck to Yorick and is waiting for him to give up his life. All the whispering voices you hear, that is actually his cape talking to him. Because the cape itself is the maiden of the mist. As a proof that he wields no power over her, when you summon the maiden of the mist in game you can see that she moves and attacks on her own. So in fact we don't summon her, we just release her. Next up we have Aurelion. This is going to be a weird one, but bear with me. I think everyone knows that he can create and destroy stars as he wants. Although he actually doesn't want to. Because every time a star is destroyed he feels its pain. So I don't even know why he can create entire galaxy full of stars and destroy it just to stun someone. The ability I wanted to mention is Comet of Legend. The ability that allows you to fly over the walls. According to the lore, when Aurelian travels through the galaxy, he shines like a star which gives him the appearance of a comet. So when people see a falling star in the sky, it is in fact just Aurelian. This is supposed to be represented by the ability Comet of Legend. Then we have Echo. All of his abilities are based around the fact that he is using a broken Z-Drive to travel back in time. His Q throws a device that shatters and then rewinds. His ultimate straight up rewinds time, but his E and W are the interesting parts. When you use W, what happens is that Echo throws a stun grenade and travels back in time so that what he just did happened in a different timeline. When he then enters the area where the stun grenade was used, he rewinds time not only back to the point he threw the grenade, but also forward to the point when he landed it in the other timeline. Even if I drew this, most people wouldn't get it. His E is much easier to explain. When you use it, he normally rolls. 
But when he gets close to you, he doesn't teleport to you, but he rewinds time back to a moment he stood where you are now. I mean, I said it was easier to explain, but it can't get better than that. So let's just move on. Next we have Ezreal. What Ezreal does is no magic that he controls himself. He is not a mage. The only reason he can cast magical bullets and warp around is because of his glove. He found it while exploring the deserts of Shurima and it seemed to be a part of a full armor. If only the glove could give him so much power, then what powers would he wield if he uncovered all the pieces? And that's it for Ezreal. His lore is already too short, so there isn't much to explain anyway. Next we have Shen and his spirit blade. The blade itself was given to Shen after he became the Eye of Twilight. This title is given to those who can walk in and out of the spirit realm to fight evil in both worlds to ultimately keep Runeterra in balance. This is why Shen is using two blades. The Ionian Steel Saber to kill in the real world and the Spirit Blade to slay demons in the spirit realm. Every time you cast Q, his blade warps through the spirit realm back into his hands. Technically, no one besides Shen should be able to see the blade, but honestly, that could lead into some balance issues. Next up, we have Amumu. I know I haven't covered his lore yet, but don't worry, I am working on it. His passive does exactly what he does in the lore. It is a cursed touch, so everything he touches, dies. Despair and Tantrum only show Amumu's instability, but what's interesting about him is his ultimate. The curse of the said mummy may not actually be caused by a curse. It seems to be activated when Amumu can't handle his emotions anymore. This ability didn't really appear in his actual lore, but it was shown in the Curse of the Sad Mummy music video, which, I might add, is supposed to be canon. You can see that this is just an uncontrollable explosion of anger and sadness that takes over his body. Coming near the end, we have Ilawi with her test of spirit. This ability rips the soul out of your body and makes you fight for it while being attacked by giant tentacles. Only those who are able to reach their souls and claim them are worthy of following their dreams. For example, after Gangplank's ship exploded and he was mortally wounded, he clawed his way to Ilawi. But instead of helping him straight away, she kicked him in the face and made him go through the trial to see if he really is worth saving. In game, this trial works perfectly. When Ilawi rips out your soul, she forces you to fight for it. If you fail or if you run away, you become cursed and your punishment will arrive in the form of more tentacles. And the final champion I wanted to talk about is Rise. I don't think I can explain his normal abilities since all of those are just random magic spells, but his ultimate sure stands out. I remember when all the pro players talked about his kit and how his ultimate doesn't really make sense at all. That is right, mechanically his ultimate is just a random spell, but lore wise it all makes sense. Some of you may remember that the first time we encountered Realm Warp was when Tyrus used it to save both Rise and himself from the cataclysm that was caused by the Rune Wars. At the time, Rise didn't know how to cast this spell, so he traveled around on foot. But after defeating his master and learning about the secrets of the scroll, he learned this spell too. And only because of Realm Warp he is able to hide all the runestones around the world. He jumps to location no one else even heard about and binds the runestones there. Arguably, it is only because of this spell that Rune Terra was not destroyed yet. So as random as it may seem, there is a reason to it. 
And with that, I will end both this list and this video. Next time, I would love to look into abilities that don't make sense at all. Sometimes Riot likes to give champions abilities that may look cool in the game, but make a lot of mess in the story. So tell me if you enjoyed this video so I can look into that one. So for now, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, you can always like it below or subscribe for more lore based content. You can always look for cat pictures on my Twitter and Facebook, although mostly Twitter. And as always, thank you come again. So if this video is released on the 25th, which it should, that means that tomorrow will be my birthday. The problem is that I will not be here on the 26th, which is my birthday. I will only be here on the 25th, which means, my final point, I will stream from the 25th to the 26th throughout the midnight. Uh, that should be Paris time. I don't know what the American time there is for it. There is also a fly flying around the microphone. I hope it doesn't pick it up. So yeah, there will be a birthday stream. Also, my P.O. box was cancelled. I had to cancel it and I'll make a new one, unfortunately. Which also means that if someone sent me something, I may not be able to get it. Which makes me really, really, really sad. And I am sorry. I am really sorry for that. But yeah, I'm making a new one. And with that, see you in the next video. There is next one should be lore. So yeah, see you.